All right, we have one more type of loop that I want to share with you. It's called a do loop or a do while loop. Um, it is basically a while loop, except instead of checking the condition first, the, check, the condition is checked at the end of the loop. So in terms of our flow chart, we, all, we run the body of the loop first, then we check the condition. If the condition is true, we run the body of the loop again, and then we check the condition. And whenever the condition is false, we move on after the loop. This means in a do loop, we always run the body at least once. Okay. And there's times when that is helpful. Okay. So there's times we want to do that. All right, let's see what that looks like in code. So we're going to create another public static void method called do example. Do example. And we're going to capture a little comment block here explaining what does a do while loop do. So the do it's called a do loop in our text. I and many others call it a do while loop um, because of the syntax. You'll see that in just a moment. Step one, the do loop executes the body of the loop. Step two, it then evaluates the condition. If the condition is true, executes, oops, executes the body of the loop again. If false, continues execution after, boy, I am struggling today typing, after the loop. When we started with the while loop, we used the loop to print the numbers one, two, three, four, five. When we did the for loop, we used a for loop to print the numbers one, two, three, four, five. As you might imagine, now that we're doing the do loop, we're gonna print the numbers one, two, three, four, five. Okay. The purpose of this is to show you any of these three looping structures work. Okay. They all have the same four parts that we've been studying. Initialization, condition, update the loop variable, body. They're just in different places. So let's see how it works with our do while loop. We need some sort of a loop variable. We're gonna keep calling it count. So int count equals one. That's the initialization. A do while loop starts with the keyword do followed by curly brackets. After the curly brackets, we say while and we put the condition. Count is less than or equal to five. And then there's a semicolon after the while statement. This is often forgotten because we're not used to that for loops. So here is where the condition is. Inside the body, inside the curly brackets is where we have the body rather, system out print lin count. That's the body and where we update the loop variable in some fashion. So we still have the same four parts. And we'll do system out print lin done. The four parts are just in a different order. Now that you see the syntax, you probably see why I and other computer science teachers call it a do while loop. It's because you have the do here and the while at the end. I think this is, I like the structure in Java. I think it's well named because it reads well, because you're like do all of this stuff while count is less than or equal to five. Like it, it just reads nicely.
it's probably not clear. I don't think it's clear. It's not clear right now why we'd really want to ever use a do while loop. So let's do one more example together that highlights where I think do while loops fit best. And that is when we're handling processing user input. Okay. Because a do, the, the distinguishing characteristic of a do while loop is the body executes at least once. And if we're asking the user for something or for a series of things, we expect them to answer at least once. So let's try this out. We're going to add another method public static int sum. And we're going to be interacting with the user. So we need to create a new scanner object, just like we've done in our other methods as needed. We're going to basically prompt the user, hey, enter, enter a positive integer or enter negative one to quit. Like I'm done entering positive integers. Our code is going to sum all the positive integers that the user entered um, and then return that value from this method. In order to do that, we need um, a local variable, which will be like our running sum. So let's create that int sum equals zero. It's important this is created outside of the loop because we need this value to still exist when the loop is done. So that's why we're initializing it outside of the loop. We still need, um, we're also going to need to keep a local variable to keep track of um, what the user actually typed into the terminal. So let's call that the value. This is a good fit for a do while loop because we want the body of our loop to execute at least once. So we can say do, and inside the body, we can prompt the user system.out.print, enter a positive integer or negative one to quit. And then we can say value equals s.next to read in the integer they type in. And then sum plus equals value. And then finally, here's our, our while condition. While value is not equal to negative one, keep running the body. And then we return the sum. I think this is a good fit for a do while loop because we know we want to ask the user this question at least once. We want to get at least one answer from the user. As long as it's not negative one, we'll come back up here and run the body again. The use of this variable value, which is in the condition here, we give it a special name. This is called, ooh, let me make a little comment block here. This is called a sentinel value or sentinel variable, let's say sentinel variable slash value, like it's, we use both terms. What that actually is, it's a value, in this case, negative one, used to terminate a loop. It is often entered by a user. We don't know how many times this do while loop is gonna run. The user might type in one positive integer, they might type in three positive integers. They might type in 417 positive integers. But eventually they're gonna type in a negative one, which is that sentinel value, which makes the loop stop. Um, I'm not exactly sure why we use sentinel. I mean, I think of a sentinel as someone who's like watching guard and keeping an eye out on things. So you could think of this variable as like keeping an eye out for a special input. And once that special input occurs, something happens. Maybe that's why we call it a sentinel. Um, but anyway, that's the term that's used. It's not a Java term. You called it the same thing in your programming one class. Um, it's just a sentinel value. So. Here's what I want you to do with this code. 
I want you to predict what this method is going to return if the user enters the following values. 7, 3, 5, negative 1. Research shows that if you make a prediction of what code does before you run it, it strengthens your understanding of these concepts. Okay, So prediction first, then run the code and check your prediction. Is it correct? All right, quick show of hands. Who thinks it's going to return 15? Who thinks it's going to return 14? Did I do the math wrong? OK. All right. Most of you didn't raise your hand, so I was worried. It's got to be one. Well, it doesn't have to be one of those two. Usually, students think it's one of those two. It actually returns 14. What do we want this method to return? What's the right answer? 15, right? 7 plus 3 plus 5 is 15. Okay. Why does it return 14 instead? Yeah. When the user enters a negative 1, it adds a negative 1 to sum, and then the loop stops. Okay. Let's make note of this. This is a bug. Sum is one less than it should be. We have an off by one error again. I wanted to highlight this potential pitfall because this comes up a lot. It's easy for the loop to run one too few times, one too many times. Really, the trickiest case is in the last iteration of that loop specifically when we're dealing with some sort of a sentinel variable, is do we end up doing something one too many or one too few times, like in terms of adding to the variable sum, okay? On Monday, I'll show you some, like an example and some basic tips to help you structure your code to avoid these types of issues a little bit, but you always need to be aware of it. It's always important to trace through your code and see if it's actually doing what you intend. 